This video will discuss the concepts of formal truth, validity, and the parts of arguments. The arrangement of premises and conclusions are the form of the argument. A form that leads to a necessarily true conclusion if the premises are true is called a valid argument. A form that doesn't lead to a necessarily conclusion to a necessarily true conclusion, even if the premises are true, is called an invalid argument. Some arrangements of the premises and conclusion do not lead to a valid conclusion even if the premises and conclusion are all true. Remember, validity has to do with the form of the argument, not the truth of the premises. Let's look at an example. The proposition, all cars use energy, is obviously true. So is the proposition that all trucks are a form of transportation. At first glance, the conclusion that all trucks use energy may seem like a valid conclusion, but it isn't. All three claims are true, and they all three relate to the same topic, and because the conclusion seems obviously true, we can get the impression that the argument is valid. But the premises do not support the conclusion. The conclusion just happens to be true. If we assume or imagine a premise that isn't there, for instance, all forms of transportation use energy, the conclusion would follow from the premises. But that's not what the argument said. Nonetheless, sometimes we come to conclusions as, we, as if we had filled in a missing premise, especially if we believe the conclusion is true. If a conclusion seems to be obviously true, or if we want it to be true, people tend to overlook or not even ask if it was justified by the argument. We may be led to accept a conclusion for the wrong reasons, or accept conclusions that we feel like they, that feel like they are logical, but aren't. Understanding and applying logic is one way to avoid making these mistakes. Of course, some arguments do lead to a valid conclusion. An argument that is valid and all the premises are true is called a sound argument. In this example, the argument is valid, but the first premise is not only false, but ridiculous. The argument isn't sound, but it is still valid, even though the conclusion is false. In this example, both arguments are valid, even though the statements in one are absurd and the statements in the other are, are all true. In fact, they have exactly the same form, so if one is valid, so is the other one. Likewise, if an argument is, if an argument is invalid, all other arguments with the same form would also be invalid. So what is it that needs to be arranged correctly for an argument to be valid? For starters, in classical logic, the premises and conclusion need to be stated as propositions. We will see that classical logic identifies four basic types of propositions that will allow us to apply the rules of logic. But all of them need to be stated so they can be either true or false, and all must have two terms and a connector, a subject term, a predicate term, and a copula that links them. Subjects are what the propositions are about. Predicates are some characteristic of the subjects, and copulae express the connection between the two. Copula is Latin for link or tie, and the Latin plural is copulae, not copules. In this example, the subject is mallards and the predicate is wings. The copula links them, so the proposition says that mallards have the characteristic of having wings. Let's recap. The arrangement of premises and conclusions are the form of the argument. A form that leads to a necessarily true conclusion if the premises are true is called a valid argument. A form that doesn't lead to a necessarily true conclusion even if the premises are true is called an invalid argument. A valid argument in which the premises are true is called a sound argument. And lastly, propositions are composed of a subject, predicate, and copula. Thanks for watching.